Have you heard that your day and how successful it is, is based on how your day starts? Have you had people turn around to say, what's wrong with you? Get out the wrong side of the bed this morning. Well, today we're talking about morning routines and how to set yourself up for a successful day. Let's jump in. Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. It is so good to have you here. If you are watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button below and the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. So have you heard that if you want a successful day, you need to get up at 5 a.m.? I've heard it. There's a whole book on it. Um, But it's not about, to me, it's not about listening to what everyone else says that you should be doing, how, when you should be getting up, what you should be doing with your time. It's about learning about yourself. If you wake up with no plan and you wake up late and you need to get out of the house in 30 minutes, how does your morning go? I'm pretty sure that it probably doesn't go very well. And how does it make you feel? What about when you make a plan for the next day and you get up with plenty of time to start your day? What difference does that make? There's no spilt milk. There's no knocking a pile of papers off the table. You get to enjoy your morning cuppa. How does that feel? And how do you go into your day? When you think about it, when you start your day off and you're already in a time crunch, it almost is like a self-fulfilling prophecy that you're going to be late because everything seems you're in a hurry. You know, you've heard the um, saying, um, less speed, let, more haste, less speed. I don't even know which way around it goes. More, more haste, less speed or something. I don't know. Whichever way around it is, it goes wrong because you're rushing around and you're not, you know, you're not putting the toothbrush in the toothbrush holder. You're trying to rush. So you miss it and it falls in the sink and you've got to pick it up and you've got to do everything twice. You know, you knock the papers off the table, then you've got to pick the papers up and it's all a mess. Yet if you get up and make sure that you've got enough time to get yourself ready, your day just goes much smoother. Your start of your day goes much smoother and it usually continues into the rest of the day where it just makes it a nicer experience to be getting up. So think about it from your own evidence, from your own evidence of days where you have started your day, where you've got up on time, you haven't snoozed the alarm and how your morning has gone versus when you snooze the alarm several times and then had to rush around. And let's look at your routine and how you can improve on your own routine. So today I'm going to talk about my routine, um, how it's changed over the last couple of years, because things have changed, you know, not just the pandemic, but work-wise, my, my situation has changed. So my routine has been thrown off and now I'm trying to find a new one. And I am working towards finding that better routine for myself. So I think I probably said it to you guys before, but I have definitely in the last 12 months been working on a lot more self-care, how I can look after me so that I can be more productive with what I'm doing. So part of that is coming up with a good morning and evening routine that is going to support me in that productivity that I want to produce. So so I will also be dropping in some resources that I found along the way. So if you want to check those out, head over to the show notes and they will all be linked in the description. So pre-COVID, let's have a look where I was pre-COVID. I used to work a, a nine to five that started at 9.30. It was 10 minutes away from the house. So I would literally wait for my other half to get up. He would go and feed the cats, make a cup of tea, and he would leave by around 8.30 and he would wake me up before he left and let me know he was leaving and that I had a cup of tea there. So I would drink my tea, usually down it because he usually made it as the first thing he did. So it was almost cold by the time he woke me up to tell me that it was there. So I down this cup of tea, then I'd go back to sleep. So my alarm was set for nine o'clock. 
So I would get up at nine o'clock when I had to be at work at half past nine. I had to leave the house by 9.20 to get to work. So I gave myself 20 minutes. And what I would do is bung on some clothes, brush my teeth, flannel my face, tie my hair back and go. Um, I would usually, if I was going to take my lunch, I would have made it the night before. Um, otherwise, I was gab- grabbing a Tesco's meal deal at lunchtime. So I'm going to be honest here. Sometimes I wouldn't brush my teeth or flannel my face. And I, I don't generally didn't brush my hair because for those of you who know me know that my hair was like down to my hips and it would be tied back all the time. So it didn't really get knotty because it was always <laughs> tied back. So I would just take it out, re reshuffle it and tie it back up. Now, Some of you may be thinking, "Uh, that's gross. Can't believe that you left the house without brushing your teeth any day of the week. But I'm going to admit that when I was working pre-COVID, I was very depressed and it was very hard for me to get up and go to work. And it was very hard for me to do those basic self-care elements because when you are depressed, All of your energy is going outside of yourself. It is going to the people around you that need you to, like I went to work and I was there from 9.30 to 3.30 because that's what they expected of me. And that took a lot of effort for me to do that because I didn't want to go anywhere. I just wanted to be in my bed. So the effort that that took um, was immense for me. And then, you know, I would come home and my daughter would need my help or my partner would need my attention. And it was all of that external stuff taking energy away from me that it meant that things that I needed to do for myself, just I didn't care. I just didn't care enough to do it. So, you know, that's what happens. And I don't want anyone to feel ashamed of how their depression affects them. So I am sharing my experience. It doesn't happen for everybody who is suffering with depression of any kind. It's not, you know, this is a blanket. These are the symptoms of. Um, But for me, this is how it manifests itself. It's complete uncaringness for myself. So, you know, when... When you find it hard just to get out of bed in the morning and get to work, you know, anything that you do is a celebration, a victory for you. So, you know, in the early pandemic, um, obviously things changed and I didn't have to go and work this job anymore. And for me, that reduced my anxiety and my depression quite a lot. Um And it started improving to the point where I didn't need to take my medication anymore. And I've been medication free now for coming up for two years. So I'm really pleased that that has that has happened for me. Um, But I also started reading some books. So you've all heard, you know, the big named online entrepreneurs talk about their morning routines getting up at 5 a.m and you know being able to do what they do be successful and I actually thought screw that I guess I won't be successful then because I'm not a morning person and I struggle to get up in the morning even without depression like it's just something that I struggle with I like my bed I have cats that really like to come and keep me company in the morning. It just makes it very difficult to want to get out, especially when it's cold and wet and muggy outside. So um, that that's that's always been a struggle. And I was just like, there is no way I'm getting up at five o'clock in the morning. That's the middle of the night to me. I'm just not going to be able to do it. And so in sitting there and thinking about this, I was just like, well, do I really need to get up at five o'clock when they, when you look at the most successful entrepreneurs, they all get up early. And I'm like, "Mm." but do they though? It might be that all of the successful entrepreneurs that you see online saying that they're really successful, get up really early, or maybe they don't, you don't know. So I was just like, I need to stop comparing myself 
to these other people and what they do, because what they do might not work for me and it might not be what's best for me in the long run. And and the other thing was, I was like sitting there thinking, well, if I get up at five o'clock in the morning and then go to bed at nine, what's the difference between doing that and getting up at eight and going to bed at 12? Like, why am I going to be more successful if I get up at five than if I get up at eight? if I'm still awake for the same amount of hours. Now, there are arguments there, of course, like, you know, in the morning, you can get more done because there's not other people calling on your time. You're not having to answer the phone, all of that jazz. I get that. But if you're an evening person and you actually want to spend some time after work hours doing that, well, you still get that time where people aren't calling you and stuff because, you know, they've gone home. So, you know, I'm like, I'm I'm half a dozen of one, six of the other and all of that jazz. So during the beginning, early part of the pandemic, I started to get up and do the Miracle Morning. So this is a book by Hal Elrod. And if you haven't read it, I recommend it. I really do. His story is pretty amazing. Um, I'm not going to give any spoilers here because I really think you should go and read it. But one of the things that he said was 5 a.m. was never going to be where he started. He was never going to be getting up at 5 a.m. But what he did was he created this miracle morning based on the first hour of his day. What he was going to do with the first hour of his day, whether he got up at 5, 6, 7, 10, you know, it didn't matter. What are you going to do with your first hour of your day to set you up for success? So I started doing the miracle morning during the pandemic. So I would get up and have a glass of water. That would be the first thing that I would do. I would make a cup of tea. I would read. I would meditate. I would write and walk and do my gratitude. So he does talk through the different elements in the book. Um, the thing that I struggled with was that I wasn't seeing results that I had hoped for based on what other people had said. And again, it's that comparing yourself to others factor. So I consistently stuck at it for around three months. I even joined the Miracle Morning Clubhouse group. So there is a group on Clubhouse and they meet, I think it's central time. So their morning seven, like seven in the morning, central time. And they talk about the Miracle Morning and what's working for people and what people are doing with their different sections of time and things like that and it was great but it didn't click for me you know the the magic bean wasn't there for me so I've been working with health coach for the last 12 months which I think I've mentioned to you guys before um working on improving my wellness overall so you know one of my big things is my weight it's something I've struggled with for most of my life. And I'm not going to go into all of that right now. Um, But it is something that I have struggled with. And I didn't want to be fat at 40. It's just not something I wanted for myself. And so I decided to start working with a health coach. um, But her way of working is not to be sort of focused on this number and this um, target, but to be focused on your life as a whole and what each part of it is doing to help you move towards the lifestyle that you want to live. So it's really, really good for me because we're not just focusing on numbers here. We're focusing on my nutritional health. We're focusing on my mental health. We're focusing on my self-care and how all of that fits in to creating the life that I want to be living. So I'm going to link Angela below. I'll link her Facebook page below so you can go and connect with her. She's absolutely amazing. And I mention her because she has encouraged me to look at what works for me as an individual, not what's working for other people, not what other people say I should be doing, but what is going to work for me, my lifestyle and where I want to go. So it is good to have people to look up to for inspiration, but you have to remember your journey is your journey and it won't be like somebody else's. So you have to take inspiration from other people, but find your own way. So one of the things that I knew I needed to get into my morning routine or in, in into 
my routine of life was exercise. So I, uh, I, I can't stand it. And I mean, my, my positive affirmation says I love to exercise because it's good for my body, but at my core at the moment, I'm still not believing that we'll come on to that in a minute. But for me, exercise is something that I just don't enjoy doing. Now there is an element of exercise that I do enjoy. I absolutely love salsa dancing. It is, it brings me joy and I love to dance. However, the salsa scene is a late night scene. So even the classes, you know, they start at maybe sort of eight o'clock and then they're there until 11 o'clock at night. And then you're going home and then you're going to bed. So if you finish at 11 o'clock and you're 30 minutes to an hour away from home, which is where some of our dance places are, that is a late night. And I don't want to be out that late, certainly not multiple times a week. So that is where I sort of struggle because I really enjoy dance and it brings me a lot of joy. But I also want to be getting up at a decent time every morning and getting on with my work. And I know that if I'm late to bed, I won't want to do that. And it's going to be a bigger struggle for me than we've already discussed. Mornings are already a struggle for me. So it is a hard one. And because of the pandemic, I'm still quite cautious. So at the moment, we're kind of going once every other week. Um, and I'm just sort of easing my way back into it. But general exercise, exercise classes, um, going to the gym, all of that has never been my thing. I really cannot stand it. Um, I like to say I'm not an exerciser. Um, I am. I'm not a tigger. I'm more of a poo <laughs> and, I, and that that's really where I am with it. Like I just don't find enjoyment about getting hot and sweaty. It just, it doesn't do it for me, <laughs> but I knew that I needed to do something and I knew it needed to be something that I could be held accountable for. Now, obviously my health coach is there and she holds me accountable to these things. I sort of check in with her once a week, but exercise needs to happen three or four times a week for you to be getting good benefit from it and for me because I now work from home I don't have to go out to the office and I don't do the shopping because I can't stand supermarkets there is very little time that I'm leaving the house and actually getting any form of exercise in I'm literally walking around the house and that's it so I knew I needed to do something and I knew I needed to be held a little bit more accountable than the weekly call with my coach. So I joined Vitality Rooms and I think I've mentioned Vitality Rooms before, but it's run by a wonderful lady called Catherine Chapman. We've had her on the podcast before. Um, and Vitality Rooms is a membership that contains um, an exercise element a kitchen element. So there are recipes um, that you can go and download and follow for healthy eating options and a mindset um, section where you can go in and there's meditations and things in there to help you be more mindful. Um, the reason I joined Vitality Rooms is because Catherine also does six live classes a week. So there is a whole section in there on exercise. There are classes you can go and do anytime fit in with your um, schedule and your routine. You can go and pick up a class in there anytime you want. However, for me, I knew that wasn't going to get me there. If the membership was just the, the kitchen, the mindset and the classes in the vault, I wouldn't have joined because for me, that's not enough. I could go to YouTube and follow YouTube um, exercise routines, but that's not enough for me. What made me join was those live classes. So I now do a class on a Monday morning, a Tuesday morning, a Wednesday evening and a Friday morning. And I committed to those four live classes. And I told Catherine, I'm going to do these four live classes. And I told my health coach, I'm going to do these four live classes. Now, Catherine doesn't message me if I don't go and say, where were you this morning? She doesn't. But I've said it out loud to her that I'm going to attend. So I now feel like I've committed. And because it depends on which class it is, 
she's turning up live to do that class. And I'm like, well, what if nobody turned up today and she'd be there on her own? It doesn't happen. There's like over 50 people in the group. So there is always, always people on the classes. But I made that commitment. I said, I'm going to be there. And if I don't go, I I do send my excuses. So I'm like, oh, I, if I've got an early morning call or something, it means that I can't go or I've got to go for an appointment or something. Very few times that it's happened, but I was in a car accident a few weeks ago and my shoulder was bad. And I was like, I don't really feel comfortable exercising on it. And I let her know. She doesn't need to know. She's not sitting there going, oh, well, I was wondering what, you know, none of that. But it just gives me that accountability that I show up. So even when I don't want to get out of bed, I'm like this morning was a classic example. If you have, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see my stories with my cats, (laughs) but my cat was on my lap and I didn't want to get up. And she was quite happy sitting there. And I really had to force myself to get up and get out of bed and go and do my class. But because Catherine was showing up live, I felt like I had to go and do it. And, you know, sometimes that's what we've got to do. We've got to do stuff that we don't really feel like we want to do, um, even though we know it's good for us and it'll benefit us in the end. Those sorts of things happen. And we have to kind of, you know, do that fake it till you make it kind of thing. I'm hoping hoping that at some point you know as all of these morning elements start to slot in and I start getting into a groove that it will just either become second nature so it won't even phase me or I'll actually start you know enjoying it and I do enjoy the classes don't get me wrong once I'm actually doing them I'm 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 enjoying them I mean they are killer she definitely makes you work um but afterwards I also feel that you know yes I did it and that feels good but it is a struggle to get up and get going and because it's live because she's there because I've said I'm going to be there that's what makes me get up and go and so that gets me my exercise element so I am so pleased that Catherine does those live classes so So that's, you know, what my morning routine is sort of looking like now. I've got these three mornings where I do um, my exercise and I will drink my tea while I'm sat under my cat. Um, (laughs) And then I do my exercise. I have a shower. I do my skincare. um, And that is what I do on those mornings, Wednesdays and Thursdays, um, I tend to um, sit under my cat for a little bit longer before I get up and start my work. But that is what my routine is like at the moment. Um, So if you're interested in Vitality Rooms, I will link it in the show notes so you can go over there and have a look. Um, I very much recommend it. Um, There is so much in there that I haven't explored yet because like I say, I signed up for those live classes um, and I get my money's worth just from doing those live classes because I do four a week. But there is so much in there to explore um, that it is definitely, definitely worth checking out if you need something that is going to have sort of all of that stuff under one roof. So the thing with the exercise is because the live classes are at sort of around nine in the morning, my mornings aren't starting till much later. Now, obviously I'm in control of my work schedule because I work for myself, but it means that I am not getting to my desk to start work until much later. And that's a little bit of a struggle for me. So it still needs rejigging. I still need to work on this morning routine. So I'm definitely still working on it. And I'm going to talk you through what my plan is um, going forward that I'm going to have you guys hold me accountable to because I'm going to check in in a few months and see how these new routines are working for me. Now, I've read a book by Christine Helmsetter called Coffee Self-Talk. She's got one for guys. She's got one for the ladies. She's got one for teens. So definitely go and check her out. I will link um, the book that I bought in the show notes. But if you go to that on Amazon, obviously, you can click her name. It will take you through to all of the books that she has got. She's got Coffee Self-Talk for dudes or something. 
Um, I truly believe in the power of our words. You know, what you put out there will come back at you. And if we are talking negatively, then negativity will fill your space. Um, And the alternate is true. So I see it on Facebook every day with one particular person um, whose posts are just only ever negative, only ever my life is rubbish. I want to run away. I've had enough of this. When's this going to end? And all of this kind of stuff. And I'm like, you're just increasing your pain by reinforcing what's going on. And it's not to say that you should be ignoring the negativity. You should be ignoring the bad stuff because obviously you've got to deal with life. Life is like that. You know, it is a roller coaster. It's up and down. But if you're going to put that energy into the negative, it's just going to strengthen that negativity. And like I was saying um, about your morning routine, if you like start off the day and you drop your toothbrush and you're like, oh, and then you pick your toothbrush up again and then you go run downstairs and you go past the table and you knock all the papers. It's almost like it's just like it, it tumbles, it tumbles and it tumbles and it gets worse and worse. And that is what negative talk tends to do you know you put it out there this is rubbish my life is rubbish I'm having a really hard time and then more rubbish starts happening and it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy um I've had to actually unfollow that person on my Facebook because I can't deal with that kind of negativity around me because it seeps in and I just don't want it now if instead of putting that up on Facebook, she was to sit there with herself and know that this particular thing is absolutely rubbish in her life. But instead she put on Facebook, I'm so grateful to have milk in my fridge so I can make myself a cuppa. It's been a day. That is so much more different to today's been shit. You know, it's all about the way we frame it. And I think that if she could put out a bit more positivity and look at the positive things because we've all got them you know as simple as having a roof over our heads you know there are people out there that don't have that it is something to be grateful for um being able to have a mobile phone is something to be grateful for your children having a mobile phone so you can get hold of them and they can get hold of you is something to be grateful for you can find things to be grateful for all around you um So focusing on the negative, I feel enhances the negative. Whereas if we can focus on the positive, then it gives the negative less power. So this book really, really spoke to me. And I was like, I'm going to use this. So coffee self-talk is is going to become something that is part of my daily routine. And I have written out my um, script as she calls them, um, which is basically like positive affirmations. Um, But the book is really good at talking you through the psychology of it. And her father-in-law was the, um, coined the term self-talk, I think. Um, So it is a really good book to sort of get to grips with why it works, not just blindly believing that it's going to work. So As you know, I am not an early riser, so I'm sorry if you guys have got kids and have to get up really early to do the school run. Yes, I did it. I've been there. I did it. Um, I, I, you know, put myself through that, but I I don't have to do it anymore, so I don't get up that early. Um, So I am going to be setting my alarm for eight o'clock in the morning. And I am going to do my skincare routine and brush my teeth. And then I am going to drink a glass of water. I'm going to make a cup of tea. I'm going to do my coffee self-talk. Now, I hate coffee. You don't need to be a coffee drinker to read this book or to follow it. I am a tea drinker and she says you can drink tea. (laughs) It's about, and I don't, and she talks about James Clear in this, but the, um, um, High Performance Habits, I think, is the book. Um, He talks about building habits on other habits to make them stick. So um, making sure that your floss is next to your toothbrush. So when you finish brushing your teeth, you pick up the floss. Um, 
And this is the same with coffee self-talk. She's saying with your morning drink, which you always have, it's a habit, whether it's tea, coffee, water, whatever. With your morning drink, you say your coffee self-talk. And that just helps it become a habit that you are doing. So I am going to do that. I'm going to set my alarm at eight, skincare routine, brush my teeth, drink a glass of water because water is very important. Um, And I don't drink enough of it, but I used to do that in my miracle morning, get to drink a pint of water first thing before I had a cup of tea. And, you know, it helped to get the water quota in. So then make a cup of tea do my tea and my self-talk. And then I'm going to write down three must do's for the day. Whatever those things are. Um, I've talked with my health coach. We've talked about me over committing to too much stuff. So three things that I need to get done that day. Then I'm going to spend 30 minutes writing. So it might be a little bit longer, depends on how long the other things take me, but I'm going to spend 30 minutes writing because what I would like to do in the next two years is write my book. I have a book in me. I think we all have a book in us, but I have a book wanting to write it. So I'm going to commit to writing for 30 minutes a day. And then my exercise is going to start at 9.15. And then I'm going to obviously have my exercise, have a shower and start my day. Now, my hope is that because I've had this extra portion in the morning, which I don't normally have at the moment, I literally roll out of bed into my exercise because, you know, if I've got to do my exercise, why would I start my work day earlier? I'm just going to roll out of bed into my exercise that I will be more awake and have already got a start to the day so that I can do my exercise. And then I will feel Um, I guess more awake, more in my day that I can be more productive rather than kind of still having that groggy morning feeling when I first sit down to my desk. So that is my plan going forward. Um, But like I say, I'm going to check back in with you guys in a few months, tell you what's working for me, what's not working, tell you any changes I make, because I'm constantly looking at how to make my morning routine something that works for my life and makes me happy um, that hopefully I will get up. So I actually downloaded um, a funny little song to play on my alarm to wake me up at eight o'clock in the hope that it will make me laugh and that will make me want to get up. So we will see how it works and I will share that with you another time. So um, I would love to know what your current morning routine is. If you are happy with it, what works for you, what doesn't, if you're going to look at changing your morning routine to help you be more productive. So come over to our Facebook group, which is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash WPC UK. Come and join us over there. Tell us about your morning routine and how you make sure that you have a good start to the day. So next week, we'll be talking about nighttime routines because a good morning routine starts the night before. Um, So we are going to be going over that. I'm going to talk you through what my routine used to be, what I'm going to be looking at doing going forward, and you'll be able to follow along that journey. I really think that when you work for yourself, your whole life affects your work. It really does. It's not one of those things where you go to your job at nine o'clock, you do what you need to do and you leave at five and you don't think about it again. Your work is constantly on your mind. And so your life needs to be constantly on your mind as well, because there is a balance to be had there. When we work for ourselves, it is so easy to just get up, start work, work all the way through and then go to bed and your life gets lost in the mix. By having a good morning and evening routine, you're setting yourself up with the intentions of what you want to do with your day. And I think that it is only going to help us to be better entrepreneurs and better business owners. So join me next week for evening routines. The following week, I've got another fantastic guest coming on the show to talk to us about using your creativity and exploring it. So do make sure that you hit subscribe where you listen so that you don't miss a thing. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am on a journey this year to find balance, um, give myself that time and that care that I need um, to feel well and work hard and grow my business. 
I don't want to work myself into the ground and miss out on life in the process. And I don't think you should either. So I hope you will be joining me exploring these uh, morning routines and evening routines, how we manage our time um, so that we can get the best out of us. See you next week, guys. Bye for now. 